Hey guys, welcome to the What The Filament YouTube channel. Uh, this is Mike here. You may have seen me on other social platforms like Twitter and Reddit. I've decided to give uh, YouTube a shot. I'm thinking about filming some reviews, some unboxings, some printer builds, uh, maybe some other tech videos. Who knows? Uh, let me know if there's something you'd like to see in the comments down below. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe to let me know what you think. Uh, on today's video, we're going to be doing a Prusa MMU unboxing to see all what comes in the box with it. So yeah, on to the video. Today we're taking a look at the Prusa Multi-Material Unit 2S. Uh, I just received it in the mail the other day. Um, I'm hoping to upgrade my i3 with a few more capabilities. Uh, this one obviously being the easiest direct from Prusa. I'm uh, gonna take a look, unbox it, see what all comes in it, um, and take a look. So what we can see here is our standard Prusa box, um, open source hardware logo. On the side we have a nice uh, diagram of the multi-material unit. I do like that they included this little sheep here as a little nice little Easter egg. Uh, I do believe that that actually was a uh, sign that, or the avatar actually, that the MMU designer initially used for his account. And it looks like they've kind of included a few of these Easter eggs throughout the uh, throughout the unit here. I believe one is actually on the control board and we'll validate that when we get to it. Um, but to start, we have a nice pull tab on the top. I got a little ambitious before the video here and I pulled it open myself. Um, we'll take a look inside here in a second. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox it. So first things first, inside we have your traditional Haribo gummy bears, the ones that come with most Prusa products. Always a fun treat during the build process. We have a Prusa cheat sheet that shows all the bolts, parts, and pieces that come with the kit, anything you'll need to do the install. We have a 3D printing handbook specifically for the MMU. Not sure how useful this is gonna be considering all the issues I've seen people have on Reddit and other forums. We have some fun stickers that we can include with the build. We got the electronics unit, which I believe all of the electronics within the MMU hook up to. And then a single line runs from this to the main printer control board to control the whole unit, which is nice. It helps make it a little simpler from the wiring perspective. Uh, it looks like we have some trays in here. Uh, at first, I thought these trays were uh, for the filament buffer. I thought maybe these trays had filament that ran into them to separate the uh, different strings, but I guess those actually were for spool holders. Um, I did a little more research and it looks like these were for spool holders, which was interesting. Nice that they included those. We have our motors and multiplexer. We have ooh, our printed parts and fasteners. And we have our buffer sheets to create the buffer body. Okay, so here we have everything that is in the printed parts and fasteners box. They managed to fit quite a bit into it. Um, and it's nice that, you know, just like all of their other printers, they, you know, bag and label all of their parts to make it easier, especially when you're going through the build process, they have um, all the numbered steps and it makes it easy to keep everything together so you know you're not missing any bolts or nuts or you know pieces or anything like that. Um, so we can start off with we have some PTFE tubes right here. Nice pre-cut length to help organize all the filament into the puller body. Next we have the puller body itself. This is kind of the main piece right here of the print of the MMU. Uh, this is what feeds all the filament into. It's what keeps it nice and straight. You can see the channels that run through here that help keep all the filament nice and straight as it comes in so that the selector can go in there and pull each of the individual strands as it needs to. Um, you have all your parts and pieces for your idler body. You have your sensor to make sure that the machine knows that the filament's being pulled in correctly. Uh, we have our parts for our buffer, 
these parts right here allow the buffer to keep separated between those plastic plates so that each of the strands can be pulled back and not get tangled with the next piece. After that, we have our electronics bag. This is where the control board will be mounted into. This keeps it nice and clean. All the wires can be pulled in from the stepper motors, from the sensors, and out from here into the main control board. You know, it's not necessary that they have this, but it's nice that at least, you know, you have a way to mount it and keep it out of the way so it doesn't get tangled up, you know. Next, we have our wires. Uh, each of the wires for each of the motors to pull it in. I've always liked that Prusa includes these nice sheaths. Uh, they seem to be really high quality. Um, I've been running my printer. I think it has something like 10 days or 12 days of print time on it. Um, and these sheaths have worked really well. They've done a good job of keeping any of the uh, cables from getting frayed. And I like that at least on the main i3 printer, they have a plastic piece that runs through here that kind of keeps its form. Um, I don't see that with here, but probably not needed because this is more of a stationary object. Um, next here we have our spares and our tools. Not really necessary. I have my own tools. The tools are kind of cheap, but um, you know, for say somebody who may not have a full tool set like I have, at least it lets you get off the ground running without having to go out and spend some more money. Next here we have the MMU2S extruder kit. So on the main body of the printer, you have your extruder head, and the extruder head has to accept the PTFE tube. Currently in its stock state, you feed the filament directly into it. Well, with this, you have to disassemble it and you add a few pieces. It moves the pin to sensor around so that it's in a different position and it makes it so that the PTFE tube can be locked in place in the print head and it doesn't go anywhere. You know, is it a necessary part? I don't really necessarily know, but I guess they included it because they felt it was. I guess we'll find out after we do the build. Uh, next, we have our idler body. Um, nice printed parts. I've always liked Prusa's printed quality. It lets me know, you know that I can print this quality. Every time I've seen the videos of their factory and that they use their own printers to print their parts, um, it's nice to know that with a little bit of effort and determination, I can get my printer to print similar quality parts to this um, and know that uh, it's certainly possible. Next, we have our idler body parts. Uh, get these little bearings in there. They help select the different uh, filaments. You have the spinner body, the within the idler body, you have this unit that spins to select it, almost like a camshaft in a car. And then lastly, we have our buffer parts. Again, I'm not gonna use them. I have the RMU that I'm printing out, but nice that they included them. I was confused at first what these were for. It seemed like they had way too many shafts. Once I went back and did some research, I found out, oh, hey, these are for the spool holders, which, duh, it says S holder on top of there. Should have known that, but hey, now I know. Uh, cool, not gonna use it, but hey, now I'll have some bearings I can use later for another project. And that is everything that you'll find inside of the Prusa. So. That's a lot of parts, a lot of pieces, a lot of moving parts. Um, I know it can be difficult to keep track of all that. One of the things that's nice that Prusa does that I found out is they have a uh, 3D model online that's hosted on their website. I'll set, put a link down below to it and I'll push it up on the screen here. What you can see here is they have an exploded view of the MMU itself to show you where everything goes within the printer, where everything goes within the body, so you know that you're putting it together correctly. So if you get to any step during the assembly process and you're looking at the assembly instruction book on their website, maybe take a second and look at the 3D exploded view. It might give you a better view of what you're trying to assemble. And I'm definitely gonna be using it uh, on my build process. So now that we've covered everything that's inside the box, we can go ahead and move on to our next video, which is gonna go ahead and be assembling this MMU unit and attaching it to the printer. Uh, thanks everyone for taking the time to check this out with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm very new to YouTube. I'm still trying to get a hang of this, and uh, hopefully your feedback can help me improve. All right, till the next one, thanks.